Welcome to my YouTube channel that I never post long videos on, <laughs> but I'm trying and I'm getting there. And friend, I have to tell you, today has been an experiment. So I tried to record a little bit longer content on my phone and then like got into Canva and then all these things. And in the beginning of the one I recorded on my phone, I was like, I'm never going to post you know, slides and, you know, things that swoosh back and forth and all the things. And here I am testing it out with Canva. So you are along for the ride and I'm so glad that you're here. So I actually am starting kind of a series and it's called Off the Top of My Head because I have notes. You could see I'm looking this way a little bit because I have some things that I want to share. But honestly, a lot of this is coming because I'm so passionate about organizing decluttering, your mental health, and your space because they're all connected. And you'll see a lot of shorts on my channel here. Um, I also have a podcast that uploads, but I would love for you to join the Bin Your Space community. I'm Bonnie and I'm the owner of this channel and this organizing business. So I'm so glad you're here. Welcome. All right. Today I'm talking about organizing mistakes but also techniques. So there are four things I want to talk about to avoid when you are organizing or decluttering because these things can really hold you back. So one of them being that you're afraid to purge something. So in the organizing decluttering community, we talk about purging as getting rid of something, as editing, if you will, um, out, donate, trash, store those type of things. When you are afraid to purge something, that tells your mind to hold on to it longer. When we can control something, it honestly is safer. So, and that goes with anything. But when it comes to our physical stuff, it's something that we can control, so we try to control it. So, when you are starting your decluttering journey, don't be afraid to donate something. I always say like, what's the worst that can happen? You know, as long as you're not throwing away like grandma's gold jewelry here. I'm not talking about like sentimental things, but like, let's say you're talking about clothes that you haven't worn in 15 years. What are they still doing in your closet? Just in case, get rid of them. It's time to get rid of them. Um, okay, don't overcomplicate your system. When in the organizing decluttering community, we talk about a system. It literally is just your setup, how you are setting up your space. So in my very first apartment, I had a linen closet. Uh, it was more like a storage closet, I guess, but it just had really deep shelves. I did not understand how to use containers. I didn't know what bins were. I really just did not know what I was doing. So I would set things up and like, oh, these are the shampoos, you know, and it almost looked like a, like you'd walk in a store almost like it's just aisle, like an aisle and like things were neatly placed, but they weren't contained in a way where it was easy to manage or easy for me to get to, I was overcomplicating my system. Because one of the first mistakes I see is that people do not use containers. And the container, it almost sets a limit yourself and it helps things to stay where they're supposed to be. So if you look around my closets and, you know, hall closets and things like that, and in the pantry, even in the fridge, I have a container because it keeps things together. It makes that boundary and it sets a limit. It also helps me to know when I'm running out and I'm not like searching through <laughs> things, like moving things out of the way in order to then, you know, find what I need. So not using containers, overcomplicating your system, and just being afraid to get rid of things are, are things and mindsets that are going to hold you back. One of the other mistakes that I see a lot of is when you store things that are the same in multiple places. For example, my grandparents, I just helped them move from independent living to personal care. And I found so many rubber bands, number one, but I want to talk about the band-aids. There were band-aids in this bathroom, band-aids in the kitchen, band-aids over here, band-aids over here. And I'm not talking about just like logical places. I'm talking about like there were a lot of Band-Aids. We didn't need that many Band-Aids. I understand you need Band-Aids maybe for, you know, maybe in the store over here, but not like 
20 of them in different places. So when you don't store things together, it actually makes it more complicated for you. You actually get frustrated. You can't find what you need. You become tired of just like trying to figure it out. You almost have to think like, where would the wife or the husband have stored this thing? My husband just did that the other day. He was like, where's the trimmer charger? And I was like, I got nothing. So he had to almost be like, where would my organizing wife put that? So all of those things are something that can definitely hold you back. But I'm not here to just leave you hanging with talking about mistakes to avoid. Let's talk about some techniques that actually work. Before I get into this, I'm like almost mad at myself of how easy it is to make a video for YouTube in Canva. Anyway, all right, some techniques. Number one, using clear containers. I never thought I would be one to use clear containers because I was like, ah, that looks tacky. Here's the thing. When you use a clear container, you can see what's easily in there. But there's something else that goes with the clear container that is going to help maintain your system and help keep you from losing your mind. So you need labels. I cannot tell you how many times I have had clients and friends and family members say, oh, I don't need labels. I'm going to remember everything. Okay. I was just on a phone call this morning with a friend and it's like, why would you try to put more things on your mind to have to remember. I don't want to have to remember what's in the fridge and the pantry and where it goes and if somebody put it there and if it belongs there. Like, I just want to see a word and it goes there. (laughs) So when I see snacks, I'm like, I know those are snacks. I'm, I'm being funny about it and I'm being light. However, it's true. If you want to increase your mental capacity, start using labels. Labeling the fridge was literally the best thing we ever did. I thought it was tacky. I before I had my own custom labels, which by the way, I can make you, uh, you can find the link in my bio for all of that. But I bought these really cute, talented kitchen labels and I put them in the fridge. And my husband was like, I really don't know about that. And I was like, look, I'm just going to try it and I can always peel it off, which is true. And I tell my clients that too. We have not peeled them off unless we had to change what the label actually was. It is a game changer. We have saved money in groceries. We have saved on buying duplicates, decision making, knowing where something is. When people come over and they're at my home and they're like, hey, where's the mustard? I'm like, look in the condiments and it's late. It's right there. Putting things away, it like, it's a game changer. So do not underestimate the clear labels. I'm sorry, the clear containers and the labels. That's like the bin your space way, right? Then when you hear organizers or maybe you've heard me say zones. So when you're organizing, you want to be able to create a section. Basically, that's when you store all the things that go together, right? The band-aids, first aid. That is going to be something that goes together. So you want to make sure that it's clearly labeled. You're using that bin, but the bin sets the rule almost, right? And that label, it's like, I joke with my co-host on my podcast when I did her linen closet, I found COVID tests in the feminine hygiene products and we're like, well, it doesn't really go together. But that's what we always come back to. We're like, okay, well, the zones, there has to be a first aid. There has to be feminine hygiene. There has to be facial care. There has to be towels. It's logical, right? I use the example of, you know how in kindergarten, whether you're a teacher or parent or just a big kid, um, you had attribute blocks, right? And you're like, okay, I need to group all the blue ones and group all the blue ones. But then the teacher was like, oh, well, you need to group all the trapezoids or all the triangles. Like think about zones, like sections, like attributes, like what would make sense to you? I wouldn't go store the extra toilet paper in with my tank tops and socks in the dresser. Like that doesn't make sense. So you just want it to make sense for you, which then means you are creating a home for everything that you have. I know that they, that words, I know that that might sound daunting. Here's the thing. When you have a place for things, whether you get something new and bring it into the home or somebody gives you something, when you find a place, 
you do not have to then decide where am I going to put this? You know where it goes. So it eliminates almost the decision fatigue of trying to figure out where does this belong? How can I make this work? You already have a place for it. So as you're organizing, you're using the containers, you're labeling, you're creating zones, you're finding a home for everything. One of the most missed opportunities is vertical space specifically under the bathroom sink. I'm using my hands so much because I am so passionate about this. Under the bathroom sink and the kitchen sink too. For whatever reason, there are no shelves sometimes. Well, and for the pipes, I guess. Okay, so there is a reason. But in my Amazon store, you can look there later or right now, uh, I have two tier organizers that pull out And sometimes I'll make the bottom one like medicines or depends if you have kids and grandkids. Um, Maybe it's a first aid, something that, you know, uh, for us, that is my bin. We don't have children. We have the fur baby that's right behind me. Um, But the, the bottom bin is my bin. The top bin is my husband's bin. And so we created storage space by using a two tier pull out drawer and that creates more storage without having to like build a shelf around a pipe or like redo this or you're like oh I hate this cabinet I have so many people say well I don't like my pantry or this is too small and it really isn't that you probably don't like it because it's just not utilized well but the space that you have is going to be okay so There's a lot of things to avoid. I know I'm jam packing this video with uh, off the top of my head of like what techniques to use. I'll dig into them more. If you really want to dig into the mental health piece with the organizing and decluttering, check out my podcast, The Declutter Diaries. My co-host, Tina, she is a licensed therapist. We're really good friends. I've known her for 20 years and just the conversations that we have is, um, is is different. So these off the top of my head kind of videos are going to be specifically to help you get organized, to tell you how to do things. I'd love to hear your questions. Subscribe to my channel. I'm just an, an organizer. I was a teacher for 10 years. I started my business two years ago, and here I am trying to figure out what to do on this YouTube channel. <laughs> so I'm so glad you're here. <laughs> Thank you for tuning in. I'm Bonnie Hinnack with In Your Space. Please subscribe, join my channel, get on my email list. I have all the things. I'm so glad you're here and I'll talk to you again soon. Bye, friend. (laughs)